welcome to Thursday Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing a Klein multimeter, the MM600. This is it. This is actually the second digital multimeter I reviewed on this channel. Go back to episode 16 to see the one I reviewed from Mastec. But we're getting distracted already. That's not good. Anyways, this is the meter. Compared to my old one, this one is much bigger. It measures about 3.5 inches by 6.75 inches by 1.5 inches at its thickest point. The screen also measures about 1.5 inches in height. It is a 4,000 count meter, which basically just means the numbers on screen can read a 4,000 before the decimal point has to move. That brings me to my next point. It is an auto ranging meter. My old one was a manual ranging one, which requires more brain power to understand. Instead of selecting which voltage range I want, I just put it in the volt setting and it does the rest for me. Let's look at the dial. It measures voltage in AC and DC. It measures resistance along with continuity and diode voltage test. It's got capacitance, frequency, as well as duty cycle. On the other side of off, we have 10 amps, milliamps, and microamps, all for AC or DC. Finally, it also does temperature in degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. We'll get to that later. There are also some buttons up top. The first one says range. This meter auto ranges, but you can dial it in manually as well if needed. The next one is the relative key, which resets it to zero. Max min records the highest and lowest values of a reading. The hold button serves two purposes. It can freeze the measurement on screen and you see the symbol below it? If you hold the button it turns on a nice blue backlight. There is also an orange select key which selects the modes listed in orange on the dial, similar to the function button on some scientific calculators. This button also serves a secret second purpose. If you hold it down and power it up, it disables the auto power off. Yeah, it does that too. Is there anything this meter doesn't do? What's amazing to me is that this cost me only around $70. That may sound like a lot. That is until you consider that some fluke multimeters sell for hundreds of dollars and they work basically the same. This one is made by a pretty well-known company, Klein Tools. They are known for making high quality tools and equipment, so I thought I'd buy one of their meters. I am not disappointed in the slightest. Let's look at the jacks of the meter. As you can see, there are four. This is better than the Mastec, which only gets three. They put the milliamp in its own spot. This is much safer because if you're measuring voltage and you switch your meter over to current, you would just short your circuits if it only had three jacks. Now, it comes with two types of cables. Here is your standard probe leads. They have these caps to prevent your fingers from touching high voltage. What's cool is that they can clip to the back of the meter for extra portability. But it also comes with a K-type thermocouple. This is for measuring temperature. It plugs in like this and goes into common and your basic input jack. What's cool is that the temperature reading gives you an extra decimal of resolution. I've seen many meters that don't do that. While I'm talking about safety with the current modes, I should talk about what it does when you first select a current mode. It beeps at you and says lead if you have them plugged in wrong. It also has fuses rated at 500 milliamps for the milliamp jack and 10 amps for that jack. I almost forgot about this, but it comes with these little alligator clip leads and a bag that zips up. So what's one of the simple things to do in life? Replacing batteries isn't too hard, right? But with this meter, you have to undo this screw, but it doesn't come out. No, instead it lifts this whole back cover up just slightly, just enough to replace the batteries. At least it takes two AAAs and not a 9 volt battery. You also might notice the kickstand in the back. 
It holds the meter up quite nicely and doesn't fall over when you push buttons. Get ready to take some notes because I'm about to list a ton of specs. The max voltage rating is 1000 volts AC or DC. Max current is 10 amps AC and DC. And resistance is up to 40 ohms. The drop resistance rating is 6.6 .6 feet or 2 meters. It is also IP42 water resistant and has a temperature rating from around 0 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 to 538 degrees Celsius. So here's the things we're going to be testing. We're going to be testing two AA batteries, a AAA and 18650. Um, there's a wire. And then we've got the traffic light of things from my snap circuits. This is a capacitor, a resistor, and we're going to do uh, diode voltage drop testing with the LED. So let's begin with our basic battery. So remember, a AA rechargeable battery is actually rated at about 1.2 volts, so that one's pretty good. Here's another one. This is another rechargeable. Yeah, and this one's totally dead. Non-rechargeable AAA batteries are rated at 1.5 volts. This has barely been used. Um, these can discharge all the way down to 3.6 volts, but they can be charged all the way up to 4.2. Let's see if I can run current through this wire using the continuity checker. nice and latched. So there you go. I can run current through this wire. Here's a capacitor on my um, from my snap circuits. We're going to go relative to make it zero and there we go. 10 microfarad capacitor. This says 10.55 microfarads. This says 10 microfarads, so yeah. There's a resistor. Oh, let's actually put it on the resistance mode. Yeah, it's a 1k ohm resistor. Now let's see if we can make the LED light up and how much voltage drop happens across the diode. There we go. 1.64 volts. So now it's time to see what I think about the multimeter. So what do I like about it? Well the first thing is that I do like how many features it has. It may not look like it would have a million things, but I do like it has your basic stuff plus capacitance and frequency and temperature and I just think that it has a lot of features that you may or may not need to use, but they're there in case you need them. I also like that it has a very large screen. The numbers show up nice and big. 
much more readable than my old Mastec meter. I also like that it's auto-ranging. I know many meters are auto-ranging, but having to get used to the Mastec, that was a manual ranging dial. Um, I just definitely like this one more because it does all that for you. I also think that it has a very sturdy design, and it even says tough meter right on it. So, um, yeah, it's it definitely feels very solid. It does not feel cheap. It, it feels like a decent quality meter. I do like as well that it's not crazy expensive. This is between $65 and $75, and it's pretty decent for what you're paying for. Um, it's much better than the Maztec that was 10 to 20 bucks. And you don't have to empty your pockets over a fluke meter, which is five or six hundred bucks. So if you don't have that kind of money to spend, this I think would be the next best thing for a decent meter under a hundred dollars. I also think the continuity buzzer and just the beeps on this thing in general are quite high quality. It's very responsive, it's latched, it's not scratchy and doesn't kill my meter like it does on the Maztec. And I know I mentioned it and kind of showed it earlier, but the temperature screen, I do like how it shows you an extra decimal. Um, many meters do not do that. It just kind of gives you the ambient temperature without a decimal. And um, I just, I like, it makes it so that you can see temperature changes more clearly. Now let's go over what I don't like. Number one, the batteries. It comes with batteries, but they are... I would say next to impossible to install. Having to unscrew this screw and just the whole, you, it doesn't come apart. It just I don't like how the batteries go in at all. Um, it kind of almost seems like an afterthought of how to get the batteries in there without dismantling the whole meter. I mean, at least you don't have to t open it up. But I mean, I don't. This is a pain to get the batteries in and out. And something that gets me every time is that the meter always defaults to AC, no matter what you left it on last. Um, I just, every time I want to test a battery and all this, I always forget, and I'm always wondering why my battery is around zero volts, and then I have to remember to select the other mode. I just, I don't think they did the dial correctly, only having one volt setting. They should have had the volt setting AC, and then a volts DC setting separate. Um, same thing over here where they combined all the ohm stuff and all that. I would have rather had the continuity mode on its own setting or something. At least they didn't combine the capacitance mode in with all this. There are some meters that combine way too much stuff on one setting of the meter. This does okay with that. It's just I wish that the volts were separated into AC and DC. So thank you for watching this week's episode of Thursday Reviews. I know it was a lot of information thrown at you all at once, and I'm sorry for that, but you may want to re-watch some parts of the video. But anyways, I'll see you on the next one.